So Creality sent me their new Ender 5 S1. So let's check this thing out and see if it's worth getting. And when I first saw this printer, I thought it was going to be a Core XY, but I was completely wrong. And as you can see, right on the top and the back of the machine, there are two different separate drivers moving the X and Y axis. So sadly, you're not going to be getting the speeds of a Core XY. And with that being said, this isn't a bed slinger, so you can run it faster than an Ender 3 and still get good quality prints. In all of the advertisements for this printer, it says that it can do up to 250 millimeters per second, which is definitely pretty fast. But you're most likely not going to be printing at its max speed, and even in its spec sheet, there is a typical print speed of 120 millimeters per second. And if you want to put this into perspective a little bit better, the Ender 3 has a max print speed of 120 millimeters per second, and most of the time I'm printing at 50 to 90 millimeters per second. But anyways, this printer is partially assembled out of the box. So putting it all together should be pretty simple. And it comes with detailed instructions and color-coded parts, along with all the bolts being in labeled bags. And this printer does come with a dual gear direct drive setup, along with an all-metal hot end so you can print up to 300 degrees Celsius. And behind all this, there is a CR touch for auto bed leveling. But before assembling this whole thing, let's check out everything that is running this machine. This bottom panel is only held on with six screws, and there's a fan attached to it, so I need to unplug that. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple setup in here. There's a power supply here, and that's connected to the main board. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see that they're actually using ferrules to connect it all. And last but not least, the control board for the display. And this has a micro SD card slot on it, so you can update the firmware on the display. And there we go, after about 20 minutes, the whole thing is all put together and just about ready to go. And the only thing left to do is level the bed and set your Z offset. And for some reason they decided to put adjustment wheels on this and not solid mount it. So you're going to have to do a manual level first. And then once you get this done, you can run the auto bed leveling system and it will probe the bed in multiple points using the CR touch. And this will build a mesh in the system so it knows where to micro adjust to keep everything perfectly level as you're printing. But why even bother with the manual leveling when you can just solid mount this bed and use the auto bed leveling system? This is exactly what they did on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. The entire leveling process of this is probe the bed, set Z offset, you're done. So if anyone at Creality is watching this, I highly suggest looking into this for future products. But anyways, with that done, let's actually get to printing. For my first test print, I'm just going to use some of this filament that Creality sent with the printer. It's this nice matte green PLA. You do have to feed the filament through this filament runout sensor and up a Bowden tube into your hot end. This printer did come with a full-size SD card with some test files on it. And I also preheated the printer, so everything should be good to go. And using my thermal camera, you can see that the entire bed is a uniform temperature with no cold spots. And the hot end is all nice and warmed up as well. And here goes the first print. It looks like everything is sticking down fine. And this isn't anything special, it's just a Benchu test print. And for this test print, I honestly have no idea what speed it's going at, but it is moving pretty quick. And the footage you're seeing right now isn't sped up or anything. And I know there are definitely faster printers than this one, but the speed difference is noticeable over other printers I have, at least. But anyways, this print finished in about an hour, and seems to look pretty good for the most part. And that being said, this isn't the best Benchy I've ever printed. There are some lines here and there, and a weird imperfection but also not the worst I've ever printed. The text on the bottom of this came out completely readable, but the Z offset was a little off, so it needs to be adjusted down a bit to make this a bit smoother. So I reprinted it in some marble PLA, and it looks like it printed out a little bit nicer than the last one. And with the Z offset adjustment, it's a lot smoother on the bottom now. One of the things I don't like about this printer is the build surface. Don't get me wrong, it works, but it works a little too well sometimes, and things will get really stuck to it. And because it's a magnetic build surface, you can just swap it out to your needs. So I'm going to switch it out for a textured PEI build plate. But it doesn't just go right on. There are two alignment screws in the back for the other plate, so if you just take these out, you can just use this. And I'll have links in the description to different build surfaces if you're interested. But with that on, I'm going to do another test print using this tricolor filament. Oh, and keep in mind, if you switch over your build surface, you probably want to re-level and adjust your Z offset again. But anyways, about an hour later, I have another Benchy. But definitely not your typical one-color Benchy. It is three altogether, and it almost looks like a chameleon paint job. But I like to print things that are actually practical or useful. And a channel that I watch called TTR Garage just installed a push button start and control panel to their Civic, and it really looks like it needs a mounting plate to make it look a little bit cleaner. So I designed one real quick in Fusion 360, and seeing that this printer can print in higher temperatures, I'm going to print this in ASA. And we'll see how this goes, seeing that ASA really likes to have an enclosure. And the other reason I'm using ASA is because this is a car part, and it's going inside of a car that gets really hot. And the reason why you need an enclosure for this stuff is because as it cools, it likes to shrink. And if it cools and shrinks at an uneven rate, it will warp. And if you've only printed with PLA, you've never had to really worry about this. And it does look like they're going to be offering an acrylic enclosure for this machine, but it doesn't have a top, so that kind of defeats the entire purpose of it. So something like this full enclosure would work a lot better. 
And this was a pretty quick print, it only took about an hour to finish. And as you can see, I printed this with a brim on it, and this is more or less to prevent it from warping from the build surface. And the brim peels off pretty easily, but I'm going to go over it with a razor to make it perfect all the way around. I did end up buying the same panel to make sure I had all the dimensions right. And this blue material you see here is just a test print in PLA to make sure everything was going to line up before printing it in ASA. And with the ASA part, I'm just making sure that I can assemble it using the self-tapping screws that came with the panel. And it looks like everything fits properly, so I'm going to take it apart and ship it off to TTR Garage and see what they think. And now that I have this control panel that has push button start and other switches, I might just put it into my own project car. And it looks like I already found a perfect spot for it. So if you want to see that in the future, I suggest subscribing. But back to the printer itself, I wanted to print something that was a little bit bigger and was going to take a bit longer, so I printed this Christmas tree. And this took a little over 8 hours to print. And when it comes to the print speed settings, the infill was printed at 120 millimeters per second, and the outer walls are printed at 50 millimeters per second. And no real surprise, it came out looking really nice. And honestly, it looks more like a giant drill bit than a Christmas tree, but it will pass as a Christmas tree. So I think I have a good overall impression of this machine. And honestly, right now, just about any machine you get will print right out of the box. So there's no surprises there. But at the price point of $600 after tax or $550 on sale, I feel like this printer is already outdated compared to other offerings on the market right now around the same price point. As an example, this has no wireless connectivity or a camera, but you can upgrade it to have these, but that's also more money. And depending on your needs, that could be a total deal breaker. And there's already a direct competitor to this machine over the horizon from Bamboo Lab. But it's also not available right now, and you'll probably be waiting a couple months before you can get your hands on it. So of course, it's all going to be up to you and what you need. And by no means is this a bad printer. I'm going to be using it in future projects as soon as I get an enclosure for it, because I plan on only using high temperature filaments on this. I just wanted to let you know about the options that are out there, and let you know what I thought about this printer in general. And I'll have links to everything I talked about in this video in the description below to make it easier for you, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!